someone that is now working with engagement as the core of the of the value proposition or, or the mission is the next speaker, Ingmar Rensok, who's, when, when I read about you, you describe yourself as a movement and a tech startup, and that's really intriguing. Never, never come across something like that before. So I'm really interested to hear about your uh, startup, which is called We Don't Have Time. Yes. But we certainly have time for you, so please <laughs> take the stage. Thank you. And uh, very nice to be here, and really impressive speakers. I've learned a lot today. So it's, um, you're going to see the need for this service, because what I'm trying to do is to have everything that's good happening in the sustainable world get a much larger audience. Uh, some little background uh, about myself. The, 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 you described my startup, not my portion of uh, how I look, etc. Uh, I'm not a movement, I'm a person. Um, I've been working in the finance industry in the whole of my life, and uh, I, li I have a lot of ideas, so I've started and uh, run a lot of companies within the financial sector. And uh, I've changed my career, and now I'm totally working to actually save our future, because if we don't do it, who does? And uh, this is the reason. Uh, this is actually from, uh, I think this is a news article from a couple of days ago. Uh, last month here in Sweden was a really hot month. Uh, in Stockholm, where I live, we had 16 degrees hotter mean temperature than normal. This happens three times in one million years, if you take historical data. But as we going to see with Ericsson weather data, etc. This will happen a lot after in the future. And uh, this picture is actually from Friday. I was commuting home from work. This is the reality. This is in Stockholm. Uh, it took the whole week and we had to borrow plane, firefighting planes from Italy to put this forest fire out. I've been working Two years with climate change. I've seen this picture from all around the world, California, etc. But now I also have smelled it, and it's not so nice. So we need to do something about this before it got totally out of control. Uh, and as you can see, it's of course not a local problem, it's a global problem. And one problem with climate change and global warming has to do with communication. Two degrees doesn't sound so dangerous, hot. But if we instead are talking about fever, 49 degrees body temperature, you're feeling sick. So I think we should feel that we have fever and we have to do something about it. Uh, and the reason for this fever is that we have a lot of putting out a lot of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. And this is a graph where you can see how much carbon dioxide we have in the atmosphere today. We have something about 410 ppm. And this is totally absurd. This is 800,000 years. Carbon dioxide hasn't gone up, it's gone down. We have been have ice ages, we have hotter periods, but we have never been as high as this. And normally, it takes 10,000 years to go from from bottom and a little more. This journey we have done in 200 years, and it's us that's causing it. So the future ahead of us, we have no clue how this will actually work when it's once up in the air. But we still have time to do something, but we don't have time to wait. When I started this movement and tech startup, I was looking what other environmental organizations were doing. Uh, and my conclusion were that there's a lot of them, and they're really, really slow. They're not fast movers. They have done some good achievement, but they haven't changed the world. If you take this kind of companies instead, internet giants, like Facebook, Google, etc., they actually have changed the world in a really, really fast way. They didn't exist 15 years ago. So what we basically want to be is one of them but with a cause to stop climate change. That's, we don't have time. We don't have time 
to wait. And I'm going to show you a short movie how this is actually going to work. We are running out of time. Right now, carbon dioxide emissions are being released at a staggering rate. Climate change will soon be self-fulfilling and unstoppable. The ice in the Arctic will no longer deflect sunlight, and the Siberian tundra is melting while releasing enormous quantities of methane gas into the atmosphere. We cannot turn the clock back. We are growing closer at an unprecedented speed to the point of no return. But there is still time to stop the emissions. So why do we not introduce a carbon dioxide tax now? Why is it we are not shifting to one 100% renewable energies. How is it that nothing is being done? We have a solution. Right now, as we speak, we are building a social network, an arena where you and millions of people around the world will be able to watch who is really doing something to put an end to the climate crisis. An arena where you can look into what your politicians and business leaders are doing about climate change. Do they in fact take it seriously? Are they doing their job? Love bomb the ones in power that are actively looking for solutions and climate bomb the ones that must do more. Nobody likes a bad rating. Nobody wants to be held accountable for the climate crisis. When the pressure is felt by the people in power, they will no longer be able to deny, mislead, or hide. They will have to change their ways. This is a time when together we can solve this crisis, a time of great change. We are working round the clock to create this social network. But you don't have to wait for us. At WeDon'tHaveTime.org, you can already send climate bombs, love bombs, and messages to chosen world leaders through social media. Remember, together we have the power, but we are running out of time. So if you compare this to what's out there today, we're going to be similar to a platform called TripAdvisor. And uh, how many in here is, have used this platform? Quite a lot. They have over 390 million users around the world. And I spoke to one of Sweden's uh, major hotel chains, and he said to me that TripAdvisor is the best thing that, happened, that has happened to the industry because the customers are telling us how we're going to do right. Uh, and what we're trying to do is something similar, but not just for the traveling industry, but for all industry as well. And this is an example of what we could achieve. This is a photo taken by me. I was eating at KFC. They have some um, environmental thinking when you're finished. Uh, you can sort cans and paper uh, waste. Uh, sorting, but under the drawer everything is goes into the same bin. Uh, this is not so good. Uh, if our users are coming together, take this photo and spread it through our platform with a bad rating and tagging KFC, targeting this campaign to KFC in Sweden and in international, I think they're going to change this. This is not going to be allowed. But we are not want to be a platform of shaming companies and organizations. We believe that positive change is much more important. So this is another more positive example. These are two gas stations, uh, Circle K and Prime. Uh, where I live, this, they are competitors. They have each gas station on the other side of the road. Uh, the interesting thing here is that if you use this one, it's half the carbon emission. Half carbon emission from, from the gas uh, compared to Circle K. The price is exactly the same. People don't know this, but Prim has actually done an incredible job to decrease carbon emission from diesel. So that's something we would like to spread as well. But to succeed in this, we need a large user base. So our goal is 100 million users. And uh, how do we achieve that? Uh, I'm going to tell that. But how long have we done to achieve this? It took Facebook seven years and Instagram two years. So it's happening faster and faster because the way we have to communicate around the world is going much more effic efficient. And our way to organize us is that we are a startup with a cause. So our organization structure is that we have a foundation that have all class A series stocks, shares, and our shareholders have class B shares. So we could decide what we do, but we have to give profit to our investors, but also to the foundation that get 
for 10% of our earnings. Um, it also looks on peers, uh, if you go big, you go big in, in internet. TripAdvisor have a share value of 40 billion sec and Facebook 3,800 billion sec. We're not there yet, but if you succeed in this, it's big money. And I don't think we could change the world without money. Uh, we had a successful crowdfunding round earlier this year where we gained 9.5 million from 400 investors all around the world. So that's how we make this. Actually, we launched two months ago on 22nd of April on Earth Day. It's not so uh, much talking about this day here in Sweden, but International Earth Day is a big thing. And we don't have time to build a global company just to build a strong here in local market and export it. We need to think global from the beginning. So the way to do this is digital. Ericsson is a digital company. I think you work in the right industry because the future is digital. Uh, so we, we thought that, OK, why is every climate scientist flying to a conference with a big carbon footprint and talk about it's bad to fly to a conference. Let's do a no-fly climate conference. We did the first public no-fly climate conference where no one attending was allowed to fly. We did it digital. And uh, I'm going to show you three minutes from that conference uh, what the conclusion was. And we, I'm going to talk a little about the results afterwards. Oil drives you crazy. Oil corrupts politics. Oil buys politicians. Some scientists are indicating we should make plans to adapt to a four degree hotter world. While prudent, one wonders what portion of the population could adapt to such a world. My view is that it's just a few thousand people seeking refuge in the Arctic or Antarctic. Business as usual means about four degrees warmer, which is approximately one ice age in the opposite direction. So this is really, really huge. And I need to stress this, that the Paris Agreements is not a walk in the park. It is half an ice age in the other direction. One example that Martin raised in terms of sea level rise, based on today's temperatures, we are going to hit two meters of sea level rise, no matter what. Half a billion people are affected in India alone. Most of Europe will ex experience about four degrees of warming by the end of the century, which is pretty disastrous. 2017 was a record high for fossil fuel CO2 emissions. We have to move to decarbonizing the world energy system. And that means a lot of the known fossil research needs to stay in the ground. We really need deep sustained cuts right now. Previous speakers have made clear that we're coming into a very difficult time. We are in a race against time. It takes a double whammy to understand. It takes repeated shocks. Governments and the media simply cannot say that they did not know. What the hell are they thinking? We don't have time to speculate. We don't have time is absolutely correct. As we know, we don't have time. There's no more time. Yes, we don't have time. We use the hashtag. We don't have time. We don't have much time. We don't have time to wait. We don't have time, but we do have a way. This is the heroes on the ground. It is very simple, but it uh, continues to change lives uh, every day. So he came back to Stockholm and he was devastated by all the trash he saw. So while I start picking trash while running. We have created the widest range of green burgers in the industry. We will carbon compensate every email being sent. Pope Francis made an urgent call to protect the people on Earth least responsible for climate change. We need a global movement that demands real change. It will not happen by itself. It's our ethical responsibility. We need clever policy frameworks. Lead by example to solve the climate crisis. There are not technological or economic barriers we're going to make it, but we're in the final stages of the political economy battle where corrupted politicians twisted by the interests of big oil are still resisting. It is movements like we don't have time 
that will break the hammerlock of the oil industry and enable humanity to save itself. Uh, the impact of this digital conference was that we had 9,000 people from over 90 countries participating. And we actually saved 71,000 ton carbon dioxide compared to if these people were traveling to the conference themselves. And afterwards, we have a ho over a half million viewers that have seen the movie, you just have seen and other material from this conference. So the future is digital. You can make it much better and much less carbon emission. Uh, we have succeeded with quite impressive uh, social media impact. This is a reach. Last week, we had over six million people that were talking about or uh, sharing our content through social media. But it's not 100 million yet. Uh, we're building this platform right now. We're not um, ready, but already now we have some action tools where our user could use and interact with We Don't Have Time on our site. Uh, you could send climate love bombs and uh, climate bombs to leaders on Twitter. You can make a climate resolution. You could do it here if you want afterwards. Uh, and you also could install our mail signature uh, with a message about climate change. So that's what, ha what I had to say. Pretty impressive. Um, I think it's clear to everyone here that you are really already in a short time span managed to become a movement. I still have some questions regarding uh, tech startup and also the fact that uh, startups, they often, or everyone I know, has a business model and you have investors and investors want to, to earn uh, payback on their investment. So how does that work with uh, we don't have time? Uh, if we attract a large user base, say 100 million users, it will be revenue to that user base. That's how you earn money, Some signs, ads, uh, cooperation, et cetera, et cetera. And, and how, how would you balance those two aspects of impact and business in this context? Uh, we're going to put up some rules about that uh, because we don't want them, maybe not all, all oil companies on our platform making ads, but we're actually going to have organization and companies or users are going to rate them and it's kind of stupid to put up advertising if you have a bad rating so uh, for for the people in the audience what, what, what would be your call for action after they leave the room uh, <laughs> use one of our action tools at our site it's fun and you could do something for the climate very good so that's the call for action for you guys. Thank you, Ingmar. Thanks.